Oh, uh, wait, wrong media. So Ryzen Lunar Colony, come and stay with us. Such an easy flight. And we are seeing a bunker composition on the defense. And it's just going to be Hanzo coming up for Perfect as well, so it's going to be the other uh, sniper option. Not quite as, I would say, slippery as the Watermaker, so we'll have to see how this one works. Um, the Storm Arrows is a little bit better for breaking shields and all that, which Phoenix are definitely going to be running with the, uh, the Rhine Goats already losing a member of Forces of Reset. Yep, and uh, they're not wanting to change the compositions. This is he'll be backing up to uh, taxi the members back, I would imagine. Oh, Unless they do actually want to go for a change up here. Yeah, they do actually. They want to go for dive. And this is probably a good idea because diving into a Hanzo is oh, going to be okay. It's a lot better than trying to dive in uh, against Widowmaker in some cases. The Widowmaker can still have a lot of kill pressure from long range. Hanzo definitely does, but not in the same sort of fashion. What this does mean is Shailun is not going to get a quick tire anymore, which is very important. This is also the only real good time to change. There's the bump up. Oh, Melon goes straight down into the trap. Pops the bubble. He's going to be okay just for now. Did take a lot of pain there. Gave Shailun some tire charge, so... Phoenix do still need to find their way in in terms of getting kills. They lose Il Subi as well. Victorious has to recall. Took a bit of a hefty shot there. Bump back. Perfect finds that. I give that Storm Arrow four out of five. Now Phoenix still just working on reasoning here. They lost a decent amount of members. They still have some members left and they want to make sure they don't get too many staggers here. Dragon Strike about to be online for Perfect. Not super high value versus a dive. This is part of the reason where you may prefer Widowmaker here, also just because of the fact that you can rotate a bit quicker, but where they are is pretty effective so far. They are still winning these fights. And Victorious can't catch a break here, no matter what. Perfect is finding the angles. Shailen's finally coming up on a Riptire as well, so that window that Phoenix gave themselves is kind of closing, but a team goes down. This Dragon Strike not too huge either, largely avoided. It's going to be all on Shailen now. Still a little ways away from this. Watch the cap. It's already going to take over right now. Look where to actually have to respond to this tie and not quite available oh, yet. Oh, Charlin's in a lot of trouble. Vendetta able to find that one as he commits deep in on the dive. The Nano Boost went in onto BK, but he's unfortunately gone down here. And suddenly, Hong Kong Attitude don't really have a lot left to go on. It's looking like Phoenix will just tip the scales and cap. And that's a huge cleanup as well. Hong Kong Attitude, we're going to clean up. Are actually going to go on to a bit of a Ghost Comp right now, but they're still on their way changing. It's actually Super McCree from Earth Pack. That's great against what Phoenix are running, but Phoenix have ultimates. They're snowballing very quickly. And it's already one third caps there. And they've got some big ultimates at their disposal. Here comes one of them, the uh, Dragon Blade, to come straight out. Scoops up BK, looking on Shylin, finds him, looking to get aggressive now onto the back line. CQB, kind of in full retreat oh, here. Good stun up, Vendetta's not going to die from it. It's two thirds now over. And Hong Kong Attitude still struggling to contest now. Losing CQB, losing Perfect on the respawn. Mango Jai forced out. And that's Phoenix, picking it up. Well deserved as well. The snowball effect is so massive coming out from the dive composition because it's so fast and you're able to snowball with the kind of ults like Dragon Blade where if there's not good defensive options, if you don't land the first flashbang, if you don't land the shield bash, one of the first members that went down was actually Shailin on the Brigida. So there's just not a lot of available defense once that blade comes through. Now you actually get to see this combo here. I believe it was Melon being pushed backwards. He gets booted backwards. I think backwards. it's a halt. Direct, was actually a halt directly onto the trap. That's quite smart. Yeah, very nicely set up. But Melon reacted to it quickly, and that fight did eventually go the way of Phoenix. So, cute combo, but there wasn't quite enough damage quickly enough to close out on the tanky Winston. And I do have to really, again, I have to compliment Phoenix because they, unlike some other teams that we have seen, when they do see, okay, this is the defense, we don't have to keep playing Goats, we can play Dive, we can go to something else. It's not like we're Goats only team. You see the Junkrat, you see the Hanzo, and you think Dragon Strike doesn't do much against Dive. Junkrat doesn't do much against Dive. We nullify both these DPS heroes if we're smart about how we play, and that's what happened. Now Phoenix on the defense, they're not going to go for a bunker composition, they're going to opt into Rhine Goats, so Hong Kong attitude, if they do roll out the gate with this, they should be pretty well poised. And Rhine Goats into what Hong Kong attitude are about to move into, potentially the Sombra Doomfist. There's got to be a decent start from Hong Kong Attitude, but Phoenix are the ones that are kind of uh, forced into a tough place because if they get counter comped out here, by the way, Hong Kong Attitude can also choose to play Farah on this attack. We've seen that a few times already. Phoenix are the ones caught in a tough place because they can't change comps if they, uh, if they lose here. They just have to go to B. 
Bell, you can even play a bit of Widowmaker if you're really feeling spicy. A team does not quite get caught out there. It's just kind of uh, love taps. Retreated quickly enough. And now actually it's Phoenix who can go into a retreat as Victorious takes a lot of hurt from Perfect around the side. And as was mentioned here, Hong Kong actually staying on this combo is not bad either. Perfect and Shylet on these two DPSs do have a lot of impact versus Ghost. They just need to find the correct angles. Phoenix already retreating back on top of the point. The opening gambit not quite working out for them. And now you look for the flank. Now you look for the engagement. And there it is. Immediately pops up Bill Subi and finishes him off. That's all Shailen really needed to open, things, to open things out here. Now you see Perfect coming in with backup DPS as they slam down Pawu's mech. Melon taking some hurt as well, and this tank line from Phoenix is in real trouble. Yeah, Phoenix need to wait for respawners. Uh -oh. They don't have any time to wait. They're still bleeding members. They're not actually on the point here, so this has been capping up the entire time. Now that they're finally contesting, it actually just gives Hong Kong Attitude the positioning to clean up these last few members. May even look yep. to snowball when you consider they've got the EMP in pocket. And they haven't had to use any ultimates. They've had double DPS ults for the remainder of the last tech or two of that attacking. Now they have nearly six. I would say at this point, Vendetta going onto the McCree is nice because if you do get a bash bang combo, you will get a member down. It's all up to pay to try and transcendence to counter all the damage. But against six ultimates, I don't know if one transcendence is going to be enough. Just barely avoiding the detection there. Ah, oh, they have no idea Perfect is in behind them. Look at him, he's playing so safe. Hong Kong Attitude have taken a long time to set up on this, but there's the dive in. It'll soon be a little bit off to the side. Perfect still waiting for an angle to pop in that EMP. Looking for some pain onto Po Wu. They de mech him as well. That's very nicely done. And Hong Kong Attitude are in such an ultimate advantage here. It feels like now they can just kind of play that out to its logical conclusion. So the sound barrier starts getting popped. Shailin has to commit that. Uh, Meteor Strike for the EFPs laid on top just so that they got more stick ability in the fight. Now actually Hong Kong Attitude lean on the ultimate speed. They've done everything themselves, but Hong Kong Attitude have two thirds for it. Now they look to scoop up the kills. Pop Victorious, Pop Face Shield. Phoenix now starting to hemorrhage members. And Hong Kong Attitude, would you believe it, might even get a better time here than Phoenix. Yeah, they've certainly been angered right now. Phoenix is just bleeding out members. They're bleeding out percentage points as well. It's very close. Wow. But Hong Kong Attitude are not interested in close. They're interested in winning. And that's exactly what they're going to get with this kind of time. And I have to compliment the well-played macro decision-making, especially out of Perfect. They were scouting for pace, so they knew there is a percentage chance that it is going to be transcendent. So you don't want to just play the EMP and then get countered by transcendence. They don't spot pace, they know he's hiding. So they say, you know what? Don't play the trend, don't play the EMP. Just go for the 6v5. Pace, if he wants to hide in base, he's not doing anything. He's not being useful at all. We can just pressure them out. We have other ultimates to use. Eventually, Pace has to come out. He is forced to use transcendence because his members are dying. He finishes transcending and then the EMP comes out. Then it's too late. Now you don't have any defense options. That's what you can do when you have six ults when you're Hong Kong attitude. You bleed them out and you just slowly whittle down that defense and Pace all stuck between a rock and a hard place. What are you meant to do? There's no good answer. Perfect was hovering over the May for a second there. Has decided to opt into a Widowmaker. A little bit more pick potential. And as was mentioned, I do like this a lot better than the Hanzo. And the reason for that is... The headshot, especially the long range potential of picks, like you sort of mentioned, they're much higher than Hanzo, also much quicker rotation. So if they want to dive onto Shailin as a junk rat, Perfect's gonna rotate to the other side of the map, something that Hanzo can't really do, which is why this specific defense, Widow and Junk Rat, is more commonly played. It's gonna be a Rhine Goats as well. Well, not quite a Rhine Goats actually. Victorious is on the Sombra. It might just be a scouting Sombra though. It does see, so I wonder if they change it to dive right now and start yep. to look that way. At least oh. one member. It's got to be a Winston, Winston Ghost. Ghost. It's not really a full dive. I would expect a long rotation here. They just have to worry about the junk rate damage. Shai Lin, watch his ult charge. That's uh, going to be quite telling of what's going to be happening on this defense. I mean, that's the tricky thing, right? You go down the middle, you, you're potentially vulnerable to Widowmaker shots like that one. Now, we'll Zuby as well. Perfect 2 for 2 on those supports. And the rest of the team just has to turn tail and run. They're not able to do so in a particularly coordinated fashion. This is not an orderly evacuation. This is an absolute mad scramble back to the spawn. Oh dear. That's not the start that Phoenix wanted. It's 100% ultimate for him already. Straight onto the infra side. And right now, he's been watching some gift friend. He thinks, you know what? I'm good too. This is exactly Me what like. Widowmakers can do. We've got a lot of good Widowmakers in this season. Patty Pan, Perfect. <sighs> 
carefree, all of them, and right now, no it is going to be the dive, it's going to be the change, Vendetta back on the Genji, Victorious on the Doomfist as well, it's a lot of straight front up damage, perfect for Shaila, and have to be very careful here. They do kind of have the team comp for this though, I like opting into the dive, but if they do get caught out by any kind of crowd control, and there is still a little bit of it on this team, those two members end up very, very vulnerable. You can see the backup here, Perfect's moving very, uh, very back behind. You can see the point pressure already, one tick is nearly there. I do apologize for the stuttering, by the way, but at any rate, still plenty to see the fight with. Nice catch on that the Vendetta, that is so huge from Perfect. Throws a huge spanner in the works for Phoenix. Now things get dicey as Victorious gets closed out upon as well. Even though they're close to that third, I do believe Phoenix will fall just shy at this juncture and will be forced back into spawn once again. And even the support plays here, the sleep dive directly into Pal Wu, and then the easy headshot follow up by Perfect. This guy is doing so much, now gets a second infrasight. By the way, Shailin on the Junkrat hasn't even got a Reptile yet. He's not expected to get one quickly. When you're playing Junkrat against Dive, it's not high value, but Perfect and Wooder, that is high value. Now you're starting to see why the Wooder is so good, why the Hanzo no, wasn't no that good. Perfect's finding kills sight. with this pick where he could not find kills on the Hanzo. Phoenix, they are starting to come up on some tank ultimates and Pace Shield coming up on a Transcendence. They're sorely going to need them though because Shia Lin's coming up on a Riptide. And a Riptide is going to be good against Dive. That's the one part of Junkrat's kit that's very difficult to deal with. Oh, and already Perfect has found another one onto Pace Shield who was coming up on an ultimate that Phoenix sorely needed. So already yeah. again, off to a rough start. Oh, that's fine. Perfect finds another one on El Subi. Now he's looking for Power Wu. Won't actually find him and goes down off the side, but Shia Lin's trading that one back onto Victoria. Need a tire. Yeah, they definitely do need one here. Getting buffeted about for the time being by Melon is Shailin. Now looking to channel the tire. Going to toss that one back towards the point as Vendetta went down before he was able to use the blade. And Melon down mid-air with the primal range running was trying to hunt out the static Shailin as he channeled the tire. Shailin's able to make that trade. And Phoenix again getting repelled. And that was Melon with the primal rage as well. He sacrifices his own life to find the tire. Unfortunately, the thing is, Phoenix already lost so many members, including Vendetta, who did have a blade, that even if he didn't absorb the tire, the tire was going to barely find anyone to kill anyway. Now, in this sort of space, Perfect's changed on to a Tracer. The same kill pressure from the Widow is not going to be there, but maybe he can contest Vendetta and Victorious just a little bit better with the Tracer. Phoenix still not quite finding a way in here, even though they do now have a bit of a window presented to them. Got just under two minutes remaining, so they've really got to make this one count. So saw Nano available, likely to go onto a VK or a Ting here. Vendetta has to use this blade, it's going to be a big tool. Trying to get aggressive on this high ground, you can't stick in front of those tanks for too long as the Genji, it's just a bit dangerous. Shard is starting to charge up smolts, bang and charge the Nano. Five Victorious, that's so huge. And now here comes Vendetta out with the blade as Victorious finds another one for his trouble. Vendetta finds Mango Jai, and this is what Phoenix have been looking for this entire time. We're gonna get onto the point now, cleaning up a ting on the Orisa. Now it's gonna be VK's turn to go down. They are gonna waste a bit more of Phoenix's time. They might as well burn down that clock a little bit more, but it will be Phoenix camping out. If you actually see the support setup here, CQB on the Ana, Mango Jai on the Brigida, because they're running these specific supports, there's no good defense against the blade unless you land a six sleep down or you land the shield bash, neither of which actually hit Vendetta. So he cleans them up now. Hong Kong attitude, forced to go back onto B. One minute 30 remaining, still very defendable, but it is a fresh composition. All they have is a rally, and that's not the type of ultimate you want defending right now. Shailin. Over onto this Doomfist. That's already a third. I don't even have the rally now. from Phoenix. And yeah, they swapped off the Brigida. Nearly that third, but not quite. Now Hong Kong Energy gets to the thick of the fight. Sound barrier first up from Il Su B. Pace Seal close up to a Transcendence as well. So they've got tools at their disposal. The Ting's already down. Hong Kong Energy haven't actually managed to find any real kills here. And are a little bit split up and separated. Shaolin goes down two thirds. Now ticks over on the side of Phoenix. Perfect in with charge in the pocket, but not it's quite enough. He goes down to his own right click and Melon scoops up BK. It's looking like Phoenix on of getting a double cap now. It's just a matter of time as these staggered members of Hong Kong Attitude spewing forth from the spawn will not get the kills. And at best now Hong Kong Attitude will have to push us to triple time bank. And that's the thing right now. Phoenix have just forced us into more and more time on this map. Both teams are capping out here very, very quickly. We've had two map completions within eight minutes. It's seven minutes and 15 seconds. Phoenix have finished Horizon Lunar Colony twice. And Hong Kong Attitude 
need to be basically doing the same thing here if they want to continue this run, if they don't want to drop them out, if they do want that 4-0, and, and if they want to actually win in this series, unless Phoenix, if they do take this map, potential reverse sweep is definitely still on the cards. Hong Kong and do now. They have to feel a little bit pressured, but you do also have to remember when Phoenix got the double cap originally in the original pack, Hong Kong Attitude managed him and got an even better time back. This time, they have to repeat that. That being said, you can say Phoenix have been consistent here. To get that cap out a second time it means the first time wasn't just a one-off. Even though this one was a little bit trickier, it wasn't that snowball, they were still able to do it, they still had the skill. And part of that is also the fact that Hong Kong Attitude have to make a massive compositional swap. Basically every single member, I think, except for VK, a team, had to go from the Arissa onto, you know, either the Winston or the Ryan. Both the DPS had to change, both the supports had to change. It was a massive loss of ultimates. They didn't have a lot to defend with, but now we are into a new phase. Hong Kong Attitude get to attack, they get to play the Sombra Doom Fist again. But this time, into Widow and Junkrat. First, they're just running out the Sombra with the Translocator way, way back in case they do just want to scout with it. Finding Victorious' Steel Trap, nothing too tricky there. They know what they're going up against here. Really eyes on Vendetta to see if he can find an opening pick. Perfect had a lot of pressure with his own Widowmaker. Vendetta needs to have the same. They used to be finding Mango Giant CQB in these rotations. Doesn't get one, doesn't get the other. So far wide on all of his shots and those supports. Now Hong Kong Attitude rotating onto the point. Phoenix losing off one third before they get on to contest and respond. Vendetta goes down to the dive from Shaolin. Trade back though, nice positioning from Victorious. Is relatively safe, actually starting to take hurt now as he got a bit too close to the sun. And by sun, I mean a ting. Phoenix starting to lose control of this one. The objective pressure is so high from Hong Kong Attitude right now. Vendetta coming back is the McCree. They're routed. Potentially even giving up this point. They might just back off here. They had to back off a huge way, taking damage as they did so. They look to come back into contest now, but by the time they're there, Babu's make is already down. And look at that. A Ting sitting in Paisal's face going, go on, stun me. Go on. He doesn't care. It doesn't matter if he got stunned. And now Phoenix still waiting for respawns as Hong Kong Attitude barreled towards B. And the worst part is there is no rip ties for Victorious. He needs to charge it up. He's having an app. He needs to use the tie and then he needs to change. Oh, Shailin avoiding those shots or rather than dead enough. Nearly EMP. Shots. That EMP could be so huge. There's the tire gets the ting. That's something that puts them off to an okay start. They find a nice catch from Perfect. Vendetta finally connecting with something here. They wipe the sweat off their brow for Phoenix. They do get to breathe just a little bit here, but still four minutes and 25 is a lot of time. And Hong Kong Energy just need a little bit more time to maintain their advantage. They have about three minutes to work with to make sure that they get a better time back than Phoenix. And they have the EMP. They have the other ultimates as well. Shai Lin is the only one who doesn't have a media strike. And I'm pretty sure he's going to charge it up within this next fight. Would not be at all surprised. And then we've got the whole Christmas tree with that meteor topper. Perfect, looking for an angle on the EMP. Victorious on the, the, uh, on the uh, rather somber My instead. Waiting for it, wants to come in on Pace, it's not detected, but still able to connect Pace Yule, who goes diving back towards the base, still goes down in spite of that. Now Nana Boost onto a ting to get damage out. They lost BK's mech there, but it's not really the biggest of hurts here for Hong Kong Attitude. He doesn't get back in it, but still plenty of members in this fight. Still plenty of legs. Shailin with the Meteor Strike will have to use it. Oh, he now no. goes down. Hack from Victorious meant that he could not. That does mean the Phoenix end up weathering that storm. That's a tough loss for Hong Kong Attitude because they burnt the EMP there as well as the Nano Boost. Perfect's going to use this opportunity to change it. So is Shailin. This is at least a little bit of a smart move. I would expect that Mango Jai does as well onto the Zen. So the members that did have the ultimates that ultimates expended with the exception of Shailin will now go into another composition. This is a little bit better to play into the Super McCree or rather the McCree and Opera. But the big problem now is once Victorious does have EMP, it's going to be very effective. Victorious actually got detected there so they are aware of him. He just opens up some shots. Hong Kong Attitude, nice rotation through. They managed to preserve most of their ultimates that they still had with this swap up. I, I would actually, uh, I was going to say, give the Nano over to Victorix because you need the EMP for Vendetta. If you can find it, yeah. it's just as good. But not for now with that sound barrier running. Actually, Vendetta has to back off, find himself a health pack. Mango Jai hacked out, goes down to Victorious, connecting that headshot there. And Hong Kong Attitude, a Ting is hemorrhaging health. The rest of the members dropping down beside him. This melon just 
raging out the point. Phoenix again gonna hold. And this is gonna be a stagger to BK as well. Now Hong Kong Attitude are really hurting. They don't have a good win condition to really rely on as they get into the final couple of minutes here. Perfect's gonna make the change onto his own McCree. Great pick against both Vendetta and Victorious who do want to dive in. The Bash Bang combo extremely deadly, but for Hong Kong Attitude, three of the remaining ultimates that they did remain on to a team VK and CQB. They used all of them and they didn't get any distance. Now they just have to go for another push, potentially a dry push, because they still don't have ults. Hong Kong attitude slowly starting to lose time to play with here. Just over two minutes remaining. That's doable, but it's still not a lot. It still means that effectively they need to get one good fight. Well, this is a redemption for Vendetta potentially. He needs to find some pixel he needs to get off because otherwise it's Phoenix as well that are really low on ults. Yikes, takes some pain, has to back off, and he is going to swap. He heard you there, buddy. He's like, well, I didn't find anything. Back to Doomfist. Nice flash bang up into the high ground on some Melon. Keeps these members on the low ground a little bit safe. Perfect. They're getting very deep and aggressive in this spot. Finally, it pays off as they finish Vendetta. That was a very dangerous position to play in for a very long time there for Hong Kong Attitude. They're still kind of hovering around it. Perfect trying to play point guard on any respawners. They find Pa Wu, who will not so get many back to the neck. Flash bang actually does the final bit of damage there. Now these members on the point a little squishier. EMP comes out, they need to be able to follow up on it, and they have! They find out Perfax and Vendetta starting to go off, pop that nano boost onto the real carry here, Paceal, and Phoenix again going to survive. And such a great start for Hong Kong Attitude as well, they got two picks straight off the bat, including Vendetta, that's a Doomfist off the table, VK by the way gonna get staggered out again, Yikes. this just hurts them a little bit more, and we're at 1 minutes and 4 seconds, you're about 15 seconds away from not being able to match Phoenix, I would say at this point, Phoenix is gonna have a better time back going to the next phase, assuming Hong Kong Attitude can even cap, because it's not even looking entirely likely anymore. Now what? I mean, they can't match the time. If anything, they get this in overtime. It's not looking ideal anymore for Hong Kong Attitude. Finally, with some ultimates to play with, how will they use them? Rally's not really too much, but the Dead Eye's got to be something. Oh, yep, that's victorious. Something. That's a very important pick. The Perfect takes some pain from the side. Now, Sound Barry to keep him in the fight for longer. As they start to lay him down the damage. They need to finish off someone. No, Melon's felt Perfect. That's so rough. And this is where Phoenix can start to turn the tide once again. With that defender's advantage, Hong Kong Attitude still do not have Dragon. critical mass of kills as the Dragon Strike rakes across Hong Kong Attitude. Mango Jai keeps them relatively safe. They kind of split separate out a little bit. Phoenix members getting a little low, but Vendetta's still getting kills here. Shylin's going down, there's just barely any respawners. Maybe Perfect gets here in time. They got Mango Jai's fragging out there, he's the second DPS. Look at this guy go, the one third is there. Perfect's rejoining it, Ting's still in the fight. They're close to a second one, here they finally go, picking up a head of steam. And Vendetta gets popped out, now it's Phoenix sorely on the back foot. They're coming up on an EMP, they could rescue this one yet. Perfect though, still fragging out, finds Zil Sub. Victorious, must two kids, must connect this one. And it's gotta be a good one too, they found Perfect. Traded back onto Pace Seal. That's Mango four. Jai still finding more, but Victorious did find a tank. They're still on the point. No one from Phoenix was. Man, triple time bank. Love it. Even in the slow mo right at the end there, Mango Jai picks up number five on Victorious and he just saves that attack because as soon as Perfect went down, he is the one member on Hong Kong Attitude you do not want to have lost because he is your highest kill potential, highest kill threat member on the team as McCree. You lose the McCree, the other five members don't do as much damage. You need the McCree. If anyone goes down, it has to not be the McCree. And again, Mango Giant saves the day. Double kill gives enough time for Perfect to get back in. Perfect converts on a couple kills himself before dying again. Mango Jai finishes off the fight. Hong Kong Attitude managed to cap in and we're going to a second round of time bank here. Both teams have now finished Horizon Lunar Colony twice. They get that minute put on the board for themselves there, Hong Kong Attitude. But ultimately, the tables do turn this time around. It's Phoenix that go into the time bank with a bit more time to play with. Again, it's not much, but it's the marginal difference that matters. The difference between, what, 515 and 535, not so much. But the difference between 1 and 145, that's massive. Yeah, it's almost double there, just by 15 seconds off and for Phoenix. If they can just make sure there's not a single tank by Hong more. Kong Attitude. If Hong Kong Attitude don't get a single tank here, they put themselves into a potential draw scenario, and then Phoenix are in a very good position to actually win this map. They have to make sure Hong Kong Attitude do not get any progress whatsoever. Very tricky situation for Hong Kong Attitude. They need to get this in one good push. Oh, this is going to be a dangerous composition to run into the McCree. 
Yep, if they get stunned up here, someone's going down. They're both perfect. The Shaolin are tasty targets mm. for that flashbang. And Phoenix is just waiting. Phoenix don't mind waiting because the time is ticking down and every single second that goes down is in Phoenix's favor. Uh, got a nice find of perfect, but that's a good bit of displacement. Shylin still going oh, down though. That's the danger of the Super Kree. Doesn't matter how low Victorious still Super got, he still didn't actually get the kill. Now, trying to contest the point, but Hong Kong Attitude are in a 5 versus 6 in an unfavorable situation composition. They back off with just 20 seconds left. And they do wait for Shylin to respawn, so they get the 6v6, but the same problem is still there. How do they dive in? How do you survive against such stuns from the Phoenix defense. There's no time now for mistakes. Shylin, oh no, perfect goes down right as they start committing because they have to. There's no time left. Ting goes down unless Shylin pays out of his mind. It's not looking good. Mango Chai does find one. Hold on a second though, Shylin. He is playing out of his mind. He's found one. Needs more. No, back. Has no healers, but there's a nano boost. This has really got to be impressive stuff here. Looking for the Lucio. Will not quite finish him off, but Mango Chai finds space heal. Ilsubi still low. Shylin still getting aggressive. Has a medial strike, but must stay on the point. Ilsubi still so low, but still not dead. And now that Primal Rage from Melon has run out. Powu's down. They've respawned. They've regrouped. They've found the kills. Hong Kong attitude. They are still alive in this one. They are still and not only that, but they were chasing as well. Asubi's actually going to make sure he gets out alive. Important because he has the sound barrier, but even more important in the final moments, Hong Kong attitude with perfect coming back on Tracer. Indeed, it is going to be a full cap out, and now they can go on to be. It doesn't matter what progress they got on to be, because in one minute they fully capped out a point already. That's enough for them to win on the next defense. And if they get a third on B as well, they guarantee that it can't possibly be a tie after all that hard work. Better yet, they put themselves in a winnable position. Vendetta with that dead eye. Your strike goes up. He's going to get strike one. He's going to be careful. He's going to go straight on top of Vendetta. Ooh, but it's Shailin who now needs to be careful. Vendetta got nothing. But now oh. Shailin flashbang. Shut up. Peixil connects that headshot. Now the Peacemaker indeed going to end the war as these members of Hong Kong Attitude getting chipped away upon. And this time there is no Shailin to rescue that point for the flashbang on the pilot form Diva. And that's going to be Phoenix holding out on B. Very important as well. Like you said, making sure that if the fight goes on to be that they still have a percent they have the potential to to sort of get this victory here what is now a little bit difficult is if they do not get that one to compete if this goes to a draw technically they do lose because it will be yeah two and zero going to map four if they get the map four win it's only a two and one so four Phoenix to win here. They have to fully cap out A, they have to get on to B and get that one tick. They cannot get a draw on B. Now here's the thing we do have to remind ourselves of though. Phoenix fully capped out on the initial phase in just over 2 minutes and 40 seconds. And that's with a full cap on B. They only need to get a third. So this is within the realm of possibility for Phoenix in this matchup. Now they do have, if they are going to play Genji again, this is how they were able to snowball and double cap in the first place and it would be quite smart from them in Hong Kong attitude changing things up but keeping Phoenix guessing by playing now this Ryan Goats defense which with a minute 45 the smart thing about this kind of defense is even if Phoenix do win it's going to take them a long time to chew through all that HP so Hong Kong attitude can draw the fight out they can really extend how long it takes to get through and cap and that's going to force the overtime to happen so for Hong Kong attitude it's a very safe comp uh, composition to play on the defense position is a little uh, high risk high reward phoenix can scout it Gamble. out with the sombra but they won't be scouting it out with a hanzo or anything so they still haven't seen it yet oh, yeah they, they have seen yeah they they have VK. now they kind of know what's going on and there it is but while the time that's happening Victorious pulls back, Hong Kong Attitude didn't get an engage there, so both teams just resetting. And that's the thing, as soon as you see that there's no one shooting you from the usual defensive positions, you know something's up, you can really just smell out where they're hiding at that sort of point. You know there's only a couple positions that they can hide. Both teams are going to play Ryan Goats now. There has been at least 30 seconds burned now by Phoenix, just to try and scout things out, and the first fight hasn't started. Taking a high ground move so they can try and catch Phoenix in the rotation on the low ground. Both teams now scrapping it out in this open space. Hey. Ting Lo might just go down here and he does go down. He'll see he's the one to finish that one off in Hong Kong attitude. No counter trades. Have to give space. And this is the big problem because the shield advantage for Melon is absolutely massive in this mirror right now. Ting's only just respawned and in this time Phoenix should look to cap. There is a Time for Hong Kong Attitude to wait and respawn. They don't have to just rush onto the point. Now they have to get onto the point to contest it out. They are going to commit here. 
with the help of the Diva. The rest of the team now getting on with a lot of charge in the pocket. Perfect. Nice charge off, though. Just trying to keep this member to bay. Oh, Peso. Yeah, That's a huge one. Really hurts. Triple. to come out from Hong Kong energy now. Perfect. That's a quad. Peso, Peso, are you freaking kidding me, dude? Let him get the rest. Come on. Oh, Melon and Poe will get the other two. But, man, that is so impressive. Now they only need to get a third. That was only like five in a row there. They have the ultimates to do so. They can snowball so effectively. They can get five ultimates here. Victorious will be the only one that actually misses out. And that's going to be it. Phoenix can continue pushing. Phoenix can win this. This is absolutely absurd. They've got the tools for it as well. Hong Kong attitude are close to some, but Phoenix are just that bit closer. A quick fight and a third. That's all they need. And right now, you have to Earth look at Melon. He's nearly there. Hong Kong attitude actually have some ults. If the fight goes long enough. Vendetta! Oh, he gets picked off to shy of the grab. Now Hong Kong attitude at their ultimate. A team charges in, looks for something. Phoenix, what can they get? Self-destruct from Pao Wu. Self-destruct from VK. The first one gets nothing. VK, he still hasn't got his, but a team's cleaning it up on the point. I think it's going to happen to a draw. That's how it's going to play out. Either team gets the better of it, but Hong Kong attitude, thanks to the map differential, they will leave the moon, go back down to earth with a lounge singer shimmer. They are the victors. And that was so close. Just the skin of their teeth right there for Hong Kong attitude. Nearly didn't make it. They had to fight against so many ultimates coming through from the Phoenix side, but so unfortunate for them, it is going to end in a draw. Now, it is Still technically not going to be a 4 so It's not going to be a perfect score for Hong Kong Energy. They've still yet to claim that a loser. Can't be a 3-1. It absolutely can't be a 3-1 either. So we're going to see a different at score. <laughs> at most, it's going to be a 2-1 at yeah. this point. But for Hong Kong Attitude, I know we sort of mentioned this. They're not struggling for map wins anyway. They're not really fighting anyone for map differential. But you'd like to have had a dominant performance. And I did also mention for Phoenix, trying to keep in line with the other teams in weeks 1 and 2. To get a map winner for Hong Kong Attitude, they were just shy. It was a very valiant effort. And uh, in many yeah. regards, I think, you know, what a way to end it. Both teams just right until the end. It was the most competitive one yet as well between these two teams. When we consider how one-sided Nambani actually was in among all that... That one was extremely close. It's represented in the tie, and it's almost a shame that Phoenix couldn't get that, but I'd argue it's almost a shame that Hong Kong Attitude, in now winning kind of by technicality, are still unable to get that 4-0. They're still not quite as prestigious as Talon are over in Group A. Moving forward, though, we go to Route 66. Yeah, and now this is the chance for potentially Phoenix to still get that map when they didn't get on Horizon Lunar Colony, but they can still join the ranks of every other team that has managed to get one off of Hong Kong Attitude. So the test becomes technically Hong Kong Attitude can't get a 4-0, which means technically uh, they haven't had a super clean series, but also technically they can still win this without getting a loss, which would be an improvement to two weeks' worth of performances so far where they have actually dropped the map. This time around, a 3-0 would not be bad for them. Well, the other thing as well that it kind of changes up, if they get the 3-0 here, it also changes the situation for Phoenix, who would become the first team to lose not getting one map back. And when you consider a loss here puts them in that position where they're actually technically in fifth place, they are no longer in that top four, that's when you start to look at this and go, that's the map differential right there I mean that tie instead of just a, a win that could yep. be the one map difference that is the difference between fifth and fourth place that does happen well that's the thing about group B right now because four teams in the middle of the pack started out with exactly perfect records one and one apiece four zero four zero. for the actual map yeah itself. zero map differential and the thing is this is where map differential, when we get to week five, is most likely to rear its ugly head around for these four teams. Somebody is going to end up in some sort of tiebreaker scenario. I can just imagine it right now, and every single one extra map difference does count for a lot. But what I will say is I'm a little bit hazy on how the draw works into this, but you also have a chance here where, um, oh, well, I guess... Uh, in terms of map differential, because there was a draw, that is better than a loss in some cases. If it's now they, a loss, it's worse if than now, a win. If now they can get this map one on Route 66. They could still well do that. All that and more on Route 66 itself. Just kind of got to wait and see. Never gets old. 
And right now, this kind of defense setup as well never really does get open. It does get easily spotted out, but Phoenix who really should be running a Hansa to use the Sonic Arrow here. They can spot it maybe with the Sombra, but... Well, nope. once they see there's no deep, well, they're actually, it's been the jig is up. Yeah, they, they do know. They've, they've been found. They will still take a brawl on this low ground, though, but you're seeing uh, Perfect stay just a little bit more elevated so they can kind of pitch themselves. Also, the movement from BK around to the side to try and take some high ground takes too much hurt doing it, though, has to drop back down. And Hong Kong Attitude might have to start seeding ground here. Yeah, that's the way Hong Kong Attitude do lose the high ground advantage. You can see Vendetta's getting a lot of free damage, already oh. on 70%. Charlotte got low, and they're like, are we going to roll over and take that? No, we are going to get aggressive, and frankly, I don't blame him. It pays off for them. Now, this is where, to be honest, Phoenix only lose two, which is not too bad. You don't give away too many ultimates. What you do gain is a massive EMP advantage. Look at that, nearly 100%. This next fight should be a big cleanup for Phoenix. Hong Kong attitude. That's the thing. They just didn't get that ult charge that they needed off the back of that one. There's no defense. Not in a great spot. Even yep. though the cart hasn't moved. We got nothing to counter that one out outside of a miracle shield bash by Shai Lin. I mean, Phoenix got to go quickly though. They don't want to give too much space. Yep, there it is. A Ting and unable to put the shield up is just so vulnerable. Goes down. The rest of the team is largely able to back out safe and perfect. That's still a four versus six situation. Actually, four versus five technically, but it is still Hong Kong attitude having to retreat. And it's not super clean for Phoenix because they do lose Melon in the middle of all of that. And they don't have a massive ult advantage on the other side. So despite getting an EMP cleanup, Poe's only barely ahead of perfect. Mango Jai is ahead of Paisal. Shailin is well ahead of Victorious, and Melon still needs to do some catch-ups with Phoenix. It is a win technically, but this next fight is not going to be easy. And Hong Kong Attitude are making them work for every meter of payload distance they get. That's really their game plan here. They just want to run down the clock, set up for a win condition later. That's going to be the grab to come out as Melon died. It's really unfortunate timing. Mango Jai able to keep everyone safe throughout that. And now Hong Kong Attitude getting on the aggressive drop and pace you and victorious. Il Subi will survive as the lone support. Pawu though, not so lucky. Now that was such a weird, weird fight because Phoenix initiated with the Graviton Surge. They even got a hack onto VK, so there's no defensive matrix protection. All they have is the two bubbles from Perfect. They have the shields coming out from Shaila and the Thing, and that seems to be enough. I guess Mango Jai also used Transcendence, but the rest of Phoenix couldn't break through the damage. Melon doesn't even charge an Earth Shatter off that. And now Hong Kong Attitude, they're just kind of hitting their stride on the defense, and with a minute and a half remaining, the game plan of running down the clock is kind of working. This time it's going to be the grab and self destruct combo to come out. Doesn't even get anything with the self-destruct because the kills all came through from the grab. And, well, with that, Hong Kong Attitude continuing to hold. And Hong Kong Attitude is showing that's how you use the grab there. That's how you combo and get the rest of the kills. And for Phoenix now, Vendetta's in position. He's not being spotted. He's not detected. So for Hong Kong Attitude, they have to kind of see where this EMP is going to come from. They have to try and predict this because otherwise, they're going to get caught out. Oh. That's the detection. Yeah, and a big one at that goes straight. Oh, stunned! Excellent timing by Shailin. Totally knew it was coming as well. Absolutely huge, and a huge shatter as well. Now the clean up crew comes in, collects the garbage, cashes the check, heads back to the payload. And for Vendetta, he should have known there. The detective came up. He knows somebody spotted him. He walked past someone. All it takes is for Hong Kong to turn around, Shailin to point his shield behind, use the left click bash directly onto Vendetta, and the worst case scenario happens, he uses EMP, and as it happens, he loses the EMP. It doesn't even go off. We're now below 30 seconds, and the first cap has not been completed. That being said, Hong Kong attitude are dry here, save for this transcend. It's just available now, and just in time as well to actually counter out Po Wu's Graviton Surge. You can't combo that up with anything. The Earth Shadow, though, does connect nicely. Shai Lin gets scooped up from that, as do a good number of his supports. And now the tank's very vulnerable. No one to heal them up. That's going to be BK Pop, just the last man standing. And that one, Gong, just barely. Uh, actually, there we go. And the the overtime actually helps Phoenix a lot here. It slows down the response from Hong Kong Attitude, and they shouldn't be able to regroup in time to actually contest the cut again for A. They should now be conceding, sitting up for B. VK spawns super late, and Phoenix, they get a little bit of a price. Well, they actually did try to come in for a last minute contest. They go one for one, now two for one. That's like you said, too late. Now that means that, that fight loss for Hong Kong Attitude is actually really damaging for the B defense. It is, because now Phoenix is set up for the B offense. Instead, in fact, this member's still caught out. Mango Jai could go down this is so if he's not careful. And for Hong Kong Attitude, they have to regroup what could have been a very early contest on the B. Ends up being a massive feed in favor of Phoenix, who now have EMP again. That being said, Hong Kong Attitude coming up on some tools once again. 
Vendetta, this time he's got a connection a lot better than last time around. On Pikachu, what a That's connection. Better. There it is. That's the EMP raking across the team. The follow-up is relatively clean as well. Now extremely clean as they get four out of five, or five out of six, rather. Math is very hard. Now it's going to be six for six as VK gets popped out of the mech and dropped down as well. And this is now how you rotate the ultimates on the offense for Phoenix because Power does have the Graviton Surge. Melon's about to get the Earth Shatter. Your double support ultimates are not too far behind after that. Just a little bit of early scouting here. Hong Kong Attitude do have time, do have positioning to get back onto the cart and themselves also tank ultimates. Hong Kong Attitude. Just need to get a decent grab here. Earth Shatter comes out. Counter grab from her back makes that follow up a little bit harder. And now Poe will loathe to commit the grab with Melon so low and Victoria so dead. Does use it, catches a good number of members, but they're having a hard time killing any of them thanks to Mango Drive's Transcendence coming through here. Self destruct tossed forward from VK, doesn't find much, but forces Phoenix back. Well, there's actually a decent uh -oh. amount of trades here. What you can find is. As long as Phoenix doesn't lose too many members, they can come back in very quickly as we're about to head into the 13 second mark. Conco Andrew have to be careful not to overstep. They haven't yet. They did get a little bit close there. Vendetta takes some chunks. Gonna be able to translocate back and he's close to an EMP again. That's gonna be the win condition here. You do have a sound barrier available for CQB, but the timing has to be perfect, otherwise it will be canceled out. The EMP is going to be the make or break it. We've already seen Shailen counter that out once. If it happens again, it's lights out. Phoenix. They've got what they need to close this one out. They just need to connect it. And unfortunately, Vendetta was unable to do that in the previous fight. Shatter. Big Earth Shatter connecting up on Melon, or rather, sorry, on Po Wu, but no finish, finish off on that one as a team. Not quite saved by the sound barrier in time. Perfect low gets dropped down thanks to that EMP. Earth Shatter from Melon as well, just to make sure it all gets secured. Might not have been necessary, but it does mean they will guarantee the cap on B. They are going to push through now. Perfect goes down without being able to use the Graviton Surge. That one certainly does hurt. This is now the second point in a row that Phoenix get to camp out during the overtime. Hong Kong Energy have yet to complete a hold on either A or B. Now they must complete a hold on the C. You like to think within one minute, 30 seconds, it's not enough time for Phoenix to finish. But at this point, after getting two caps, they might have enough to defend once they get to their own rotation. Ooh, nice bash onto Melon, takes a real hurt, they're forced way back as now the grab comes out, no shield to keep those supports safe, they drop down very quickly, and Phoenix run back to spot. And the difference here is Vendetta doesn't have enough charge, only 35%, usually when Hong Kong should get their turn to win a fight on the defense, there is a decent amount of ults built up for the Phoenix side, this time it's just not the case, they're still working their way out, no tank ultimates just yet, just the transcendence, and you need a lot more than that if you actually want to cap Rally there from Victorious, give them that little bit of extra health to play with. Oh, a decent charge in the pocket, coming up on a grab pretty soon at this rate. This does mean Hong Kong Attitude to give a bit of space. They do, and they have a transcendence in the pocket of Mango Chai as well. Less than 30 seconds now. Oh, nice bash shatter to come through with Ting gets dropped, charging onto Shylin in spite of Mango Jai's transcendence. And this is good rotation coming in from Phoenix. They get a good fight with the Earth Shatter. Now they can get a good fight with either the grab or the EMP. And this is where it suddenly becomes a lot winnable. Likely you don't want to see both used at the same time. You want to see either the EMP or grab used first, and then on the next wave of respawns for Hong Kong Attitude, the second ultimate between EMP and grab used afterwards. Overtime begins. Now Phoenix, there's the EMP. That's going to be the first one, not a huge one. And that grab not really used to particularly good effect. That's Hong a problem. Kong Attitude will get some respawns in here. They've now got a chance to stop this. Phoenix is dry now. They needed to save one of those ultimates. Now I don't know if they can cap because Hong Kong Attitude are building up. They just have to outfrag, and that's going to be a bit of a tough ask. They don't exactly have a lot to go on, and Hong Kong Attitude have tools at their disposal. The first one doesn't really connect with anything. Pace all pops that transcendence. Now Hong Kong Attitude, it's their turn with the Shatter and the grab coming up soon as Shailen finds Pao Wu. Shatter not huge, no one's on the payload though. And they will not get the cap. I think an overzealous use of both the EMP and the grab there actually cost Phoenix a potential cap out. They only had one kill off the back of it. Hong Kong Attitude are like, well, your cart isn't in position to finish yet. We can wait for this respawn. We can save five members here. You're not going to stagger us out. Once we get into the overtime, we're actually heavily favored. Our spawn's right here. Your spawn is super far away. Might both, as well be on the moon. Both teams are going to have delayed spawns here, and Hong Kong Attitude are going to be in position to actually complete that hold. So a, uh, a potential win was presented to Phoenix there, 
and presented win was quickly taken away as well. Now on to the defense for Phoenix. What they can be proud of is getting 70.70 meters is still a very, very good amount of distance considering how difficult it was to push through A, how difficult B was, and then even with only one minute and 30 on the C, they still get most of the distance. And that's the real thing here, actually. You've got to compliment some part of that. I mean, to look at that all and say, oh, well, they didn't quite cap out and maybe they could have. I mean, there was a point where it looked like they weren't even going to cap A. There was a point where it looked like they weren't even going to get past the front of Big Earls. And the fact that they got as far as they did after such a rough start is still commendable. But I would still expect Hong Kong Attitude to be able to do better. And it's very similar to previous maps we've seen from Phoenix, especially Horizon Lunar Colony, where they get an advantage here. They say, okay, we've given ourselves a chance to win. It's not now going to be an impossible place to be in. We have something to do for, to defend. We can go back to seat. We can actually hold there. But it is going to be a very difficult task, and they are going to get spotted out super quick. This thing, they can do it, but they've still got to actually do it. Shylin on the Sparrow. Plenty of space to work with, and look at all the pain they take. Able to find Il Subi. That's one rocket too many. And that's the thing with the goats. The movement pattern very predictable. Double by Victorious goes down. Now looking to get more here out on Sapo Wu. Shaolin taking some pain. No drops back into cover. And perfect finishes off Vendetta. That's going to be Phoenix routed. And while Shaolin does take some damage, there's no kill pressure towards him. I mean, Power Wu just wasn't even there. He gets taken down, but did it now onto the McCree. There should be a Super Cree coming through, which does give a little bit more pressure against specifically Shylin. But when you run the Rhine Goats in the defense, you have to expect, once it gets scouted out, the offense can change cops at any point, and the fire can come through. Rocket Barrage nearly available. The EMP will be able to rotate into just after that as well, if not before, depending on how much Perfect does here. At any rate, Still on Phoenix to answer, but they're doing a decent job getting some good shots out and keeping the pressure on. Now, Shylin's got to be careful because once he starts using Rocket Barrage, that's when Vendetta can actually kill him. So, BK is going to do a great job being a bodyguard. He's already taking a lot of damage on Shylin. Ideally, oh Too man, much there it is. I was going to say, ideally, they need to find a way to kill Vendetta first. They actually just did. Vendetta goes down to Mango Jai while he was fishing for CQB, who completed the raids on Shylin. And suddenly the tempo is swung massively in favor of Hong Kong Attitude, who don't even need to use that rocket barrage that they're banked up. In fact, at this point, they've only used the self-destruct, and that's just so BK can get himself back into the mech. They use nothing else. This is very different to what we saw from Phoenix, who in the overtime had to really scrape through Hong Kong Attitude with great ease. In fact, they've only barely been stopped up. Shiley went down to McCree on the Vendetta side. But then he got raised back in. There's still five ultimates. This is a lot coming through from Hong Kong and through the Phoenix. They don't have much. They've got very little, in fact, and very little that's actually going to be able to deal with a lot of these tools unless Vendetta just frags out, which should be possible on the McCree, but... I mean, it's still tough, right? Like, this is just not a favorable position for Phoenix. Oh, the nearly caught the flash. Nearly. Perfect, but not quite enough. Quick fingers on that recall. Here now, Shylin and Perfect both need a bit of healing before they can push in. But Hong Kong had two, they have some time to play, that's the EMP. Yeah, right as Phoenix started trying to commit in here and the Rocket Barrage out as well. Vendetta didn't get anything with that dead eye, but actually you gotta say, Hong Kong Attitude didn't really get much with the EMP or the Rocket Barrage. In fact, they start to lose out in the fight as Phoenix weathered that storm and just starting to dish the damage back. Vendetta but nearly back up towards the dead eye as well. This is very late kills though starting to come through from Hong Kong Attitude that are once again turning the tide of the fight. It's the post ultimate plays coming up from Hong Kong Attitude. They have the sustain despite Mango Jaiko going down. He will come back, he will have a transcendence and there is still just not enough pressure on the Shylin. This is nuts. Vendetta needed to find some good shots, but he didn't. So Shylin found the rockets instead. And if he finds the rockets, which he does, Phoenix go down. They're just too brittle here. That's the thing. I mean, yeah, look, the Hong Kong attitude lost some members, but they didn't lose the important ones. And Phoenix, I, I mean, it's, it's crazy that even with a numbers advantage, the positional play from Hong Kong Attitude is good enough to turn that one back around, and now in a similar spot. Watch the EMP. Because they've got the aerial control, because they've got the EMP on the ground, Vendetta is constantly pressured out. There it is, and that's going to be the usage. Should be a rocket barrage maybe as well. Don't Might not even need, need it. that at this point. With Vendetta out of the picture, Shaolin's actually uncontested. He could use the rocket barrage without having it get in trouble. There he goes. Actually does choose to commit it just to make sure they secure that fight. There was a point there where maybe Phoenix would be able to come back in, so Shaolin just wants to shut that door for good. To be honest, he's going to change anyway, so that's a free ultimate yeah. usage. There's no reason for them to hold on to it. Going to see now, they have so much time. 
And this is going to be an absolutely insane time back. Four minutes still remaining. Half of the total map time is there. Perfax reasonably close to the next EMP, especially when we consider that Phoenix don't have much yet. They have now the transcendence at least to block out the effects of the EMP and the follow of damage. Shylin's going to make the quick change. Perfax already behind the team scouting. Sitting on the hovering platforms. Hack on a pace all, but knows better than to try and dive into that one. That's just free damage for now, just free working charge. on the ultimates. Surely really wants here, get an EMP ready to go and then commit when the time is right. Il Subi taking two Thinking months. working on the damage. Now Pao Wu in trouble on the front line with that orb of discord. Separated from his team will not be able to pull back to them. Good trade back onto Shaolin, but I mean it's not really enough at this point. The supports are all done for. Il Subi only just respawning and that means the tanks on the front line fall down and Hong Kong Attitude keep momentum going. And every single time it's like Hong Kong Attitude don't need to use much to win. They're out fragging, Mango Jai's finding kills. This guy's like a Hong Kong Jonak or something right now because he's able to just consistently map up the map up the map, find kills where other people cannot. Now Pacel did a great job on Horizon, but right now with an EMP store available and the cap nearly there, Phoenix gonna pull something out. I don't know, Mango Jujai anyway is the EMP to come out from Perth back, just waiting for the angle, ideally wants to find someone like Paceul. Throws that nice one out, not quite in time. Paceul quick enough on that. I don't think that he necessarily anticipated it. He just wanted to use the transcendence anyway, but the point still stands. It has been done in Phoenix. They're actually coming up on some ultimates if they can keep the Mango, wow. Well. Which apparently they can't because Mango Jai is in the game. And now Hong Kong Attitude holding on to a sound barrier. Phoenix coming up close to those ultimates have not had a chance to use them. And it looks like it's all over but the crying. Hong Kong Attitude preserving their first place title Technically low losses in this series. Technically not a 4-0 either, but you'll take it. You don't even need the EMP there. It doesn't even matter. It was just an opening. Allows Hong Kong Attitude to push in and Mango Jai will clean you up. And I think the Zinyadas in this match, both Paisal and uh, Mango Jai, especially after the amount of criticism I gave to Paisal last week, really turned things around there. Both of them super impactful, but Mango Jai finding the kills, even going back to Busan, again, the first kills always coming out of him. This is exactly what a Zen does in this current meta, what a Poor difference guy. he can make. Every single player on the Hong Kong Attitude side is just so effective and deservedly so they're going to get, so far, surprisingly their best result of the season, a 3-0. We've almost had like every conceivable scoreline so far, mostly thanks to Group A, but now Group B is starting to give a bit of a contributor with the 3-0 thanks to that tie. And it is our first not 3-1 technically in this group. So. There you have it, folks. And Hong Kong actually are going to maintain top dog position with a 3 and 0. That's the real success. The match here. score, as well as just getting the 3 and 0 in the maps here. But uh, they're sort of the place now where they've completely outpaced everyone after, th even if they drop two matches now into week four and five, which is super unlikely. I'm pretty sure at a 3 2 record, they'd still make playoffs. So yeah. they're probably the only team that have exactly safe that I would say. I. Th I I think yeah. I think yeah. I think even First if they team get that is definitely safe. Yeah. Even if they get 0-4 here, even if they they go 3-2 with that uh, with that map differential there of losing the four, I think they are still technically. There's safe. not a second team in this group like there is an A that yeah. really contests for that number one spot. Yeah. But that is going to be the second match done and dusted. The next one is going to be very very exciting. Can't wait for this. This is what I think is going to be the match of the evening here. Potentially yeah. match of the week. Cyclone coupling coming up next versus New Paradigm. You don't want to miss that. Come back right after this break.